Way back in August 2014, I put together a video about how I used the Surface Pro 3. That was my very first Surface device. Now, I'd been using Windows on tablets for 12 years at that stage, but the first couple of iterations of Surface, the RT, Pro 1 and 2, well, they didn't really pique my interest. The Pro 3 though, that was a game changer. And now I've had every one of the last five generations of Surface Pro. We're now up to the Surface Pro 8, and as you'd expect, I've added it to my collection of Surfi. Here's how I'm using it now. I got a Surface Pro 8 with an Intel Core i5 processor and 256 gigabytes of storage. It's pretty middle of the road, and in my work, I haven't found many applications that would need more just yet. The Pro 8 looks just like my Surface Pro X. In fact, I could only get a black keyboard at the time, so I swapped the poppy red keyboard from my Pro X right over onto the Pro 8. Now I have the Pro X and the Pro 8, and I'll talk about how they compare in another video. I kept the slim pen too that came with the new keyboard for the Pro 8 though. The Pro 8 is a little thicker and heavier than the Pro X, but you'd have to look pretty closely to tell them apart. The design is almost the same. A great big, bright, high resolution 13 inch display and a chassis that's similar size to my original Surface Pro 3. That had a 12 inch screen, so there's a lot more screen in there and the bezels are much smaller as a result. The kickstand works like it always has. Fold the keyboard around to the back to use it as a tablet and keep the keyboard handy. Fold the kickstand out and prop it up with the keyboard for the perfect lappable browsing, reading and watching pose. And flip it around when you have a work surface to use and it makes a great laptop with a trackpad and keyboard. After all these years, I think that the Surface Pro line is still unmatched in its versatility. The new keyboard and pen setup have some significant advantages. However, the keyboard and trackpad layout hasn't really changed since the Pro 4 on. It's the self-charging pen slot that makes the difference here. The pen is now concealed and protected in the keyboard. And when you fold it into tablet mode, it presents itself right to you. I never had a huge problem with the side magnet attachment for the old pen on the previous models, but I know that many people did and they lost pens quite frequently. Although the old Surface pens only needed a new battery once every 12 to 18 months, this new one never needs a battery at all. There are some significant improvements to the pen and I'll talk more about that shortly. The new Pro 8 has a fan on all models. With the last generation, the lower spec models didn't have a fan. Mostly though, you wouldn't know that it's there. Whenever I've been using the Pro 8 as a tablet, I haven't heard from the fan at all. It has kicked in when it's installing updates or doing some heavy work at the desk. It seems like it's very well tuned and it's not gonna bother you most of the time. Why is it there? Well, x86 processors do put out more heat than the ARM equivalents. The fan allows the Pro 8 to squeeze out much better performance for longer inside of this small form factor. For example, the Pro 8 will do much better when you're on a Teams call and you're trying to share an Excel spreadsheet from your device, much better than previous models did simply because of that fan. And with the 11th generation Intel Core processors and XC graphics, the performance is stellar. When it's docked with my LG widescreen display, which it happily powers at 75 Hertz, I have a powerful office setup all through a single USB-C cable that both charges the Surface and runs the display and the extra USB ports there at the same time. I have a Surface Dock 2 as well, but it's really not needed for my setup with a single widescreen display. The Surface Pro 8 is capable of running two external 4K displays at 60 Hertz, in addition to the onboard 2880 by 1920 display. That's when you might consider the Surface Dock 2, since you can plug two displays right into that and just use one cable. I've used that setup when I've lobbed into our Sydney office and stolen a colleague's desk for the day. It's a great setup and it works perfectly well on the Pro 8. And thanks to the addition of Thunderbolt 4 on the two inbuilt USB-C ports, it's even possible to expand the Pro 8's display capabilities even further. To me, that's the incredible thing about the Surface Pro range. The same device can go from your lap as a tablet to your desk as a workstation. It's far less compromising than the typical mobile device. That new 13-inch pixel sense display has a 120 hertz refresh rate. That's double the rate of previous Surface Pros. That means smoother graphics across the board, and it brings some improvements to the pen experience in certain apps too. For example, when I'm drawing in concepts, it feels like I'm drawing on pen and paper. It's so fast and smooth. Not every app is well optimized for the pen. Adobe Acrobat is still terrible, but fortunately there are much better alternatives for PDF markups like Drawboard, Zoto, and Edge. To sign a document or to fill out a PDF form, I usually use Drawboard as it allows me to flatten the markup back into the document so that it looks more like a paper scan. My day-to-day -day work involves many conversations in Microsoft Teams. That ranges from video calls and meetings to conversations in channels and chat messages. We've got a great series on Teams here on the channel and we'll link to that below. With video calls, the Surface Pro 8 has a great 1080p front-facing camera. It's five megapixels making it perfect for video conferences which usually happen in pretty bad light. 
Once again, Microsoft have also incorporated their dual Farfield Studio microphone array. High quality microphones suddenly became important to people in 2020, but Microsoft has been ahead of that game, investing in this area for a long time. My sister was asking me just recently what kind of Bluetooth microphone or headset to buy so that she could sit a couple of meters away from her Surface Book 3 and participate in a video call. When I told her that she didn't need an extra microphone at all to do that, she didn't really believe me. So I had to demonstrate and she was blown away by how well that microphone array actually works. It's perfectly tuned to human voices with lots of great noise cancelling tech built in. So it's perfect for video conferencing or dictating to your computer, which I do quite a bit. The last few generations of Surface devices have had this microphone set up right across the board. I'll often be working on documents with my colleagues, Excel spreadsheets, Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, you know the drill, general office stuff. The Surface Pro 8 won't miss a beat on that sort of work. And because it has that Intel x86 processor, I can connect to the office printer and other equipment without any fuss. Now that's not the case with an ARM-based device like a Surface Pro X or an M1 Mac. That said, I personally try and avoid printing at all costs and the Surface Pro range is the right choice to get you well on the path to being paperless. Beyond the general office stuff, one of the things that has been missing from the last two years in most workplaces is a whiteboard. If you're working from home, how do you work on big picture concepts with your colleagues? Fortunately, Microsoft have been working for many years on their whiteboard application and they've recently improved the web-based version of that app quite a bit and you'll see that a lot inside of Teams. So if you've got a Surface Pro 8, you can add whiteboarding into your work from home repertoire because you can use the Surface Pen to work on a virtual digital whiteboard with your colleagues in real time. This is an essential but sadly overlooked process in the work from home world. If you're wondering why your teams are struggling to be productive when they're working from home, well, this is one of the reasons why. The Surface Pro 8 is a multimodal device. In an office, you use far more than just a keyboard and a mouse. In the home office, you need collaboration tools that go way beyond the keyboard and the mouse too. Camera, microphone, pen and touch are just as important input elements as the keyboard and mouse. And the Surface Pro 8 has the best of all of those on the one device. Of course, I do a lot of email as well and I use Outlook for that. I really like the web-based version of Outlook, which I've installed on my device as a PWA. That said, I still mainly use the old fashioned desktop version of Outlook on the Surface Pro 8. I'll often have two instances of Outlook running, one app showing my inbox and the other showing my calendar side by side on my widescreen display. And I'll often have that running in its own separate virtual desktop using Windows virtual desktops. I'll leave that running and I'll switch to that desktop when I need to access it. Using multiple desktop windows allows you to isolate tasks in a way that will distract you less. But before I go into email each day, I'll check in with the Microsoft To Do app and review my task list. If you're not using Microsoft To Do yet, well, you need to be. It's directly linked to your Outlook task list, including your flagged emails, and it's also linked to your team tasks using Microsoft Planner in Teams. The cool thing about using To Do on your Surface Pro 8 is that you can handwrite tasks directly onto your To Do list. This simple act almost guarantees that you get things done because handwriting activates much more of your brain than a keyboard does. It enhances your memory and mental processing, so handwriting is always the best way to create a to-do list. So the Surface Pro 8, even the mid-range i5 model, is perfectly capable of doing office tasks. But what about using the Surface Pro 8 as a tablet or a mobile device? For nearly 20 years, I've been taking notes in OneNote. Since it came out in 2003, I've been developing my skills as a digital note taker. And since I got my Surface Pro 3 in 2014, well, there's barely been a meeting that I've been to where I haven't actually taken notes with a Surface. Like its predecessor, when you fold the keyboard around to the back, the keys in the trackpad turn off. So although you can, with the Surface Pro, there's no need to remove the keyboard. And that makes it easier to switch back to laptop mode when you need to. When you fold the Surface Pro 8 into the tablet mode, the pen presents itself ready for note taking. The magnetic attachment for the pen is strong on this keyboard, just like it is on the Surface Pro X. Both the Slim Pen 1 and 2 charge wirelessly when they're docked in this slot in the keyboard. Anecdotally, I've heard that the Surface Slim Pens will last around a week of use without a charge. I've used these pens a lot and I've never run out of power with them thanks to that charging system. With the new 120Hz display and the Slim Pen 2, taking notes in OneNote is a pleasure. At the moment, I still prefer to use OneNote for Windows 10 because it has a better pen and inking experience. Sometime this year, I do expect that to change as Microsoft works towards unifying the two OneNotes. To take notes in a meeting, I start with a blank page and I pull in the meeting details from Outlook Online. I put some lines onto the page so I can take notes on it just like I would with a regular notebook. I rotate the Pro 8 around into the portrait mode for the best note taking experience. There's something about Microsoft's 3x2 screen ratio fixation that just works for note taking. 
It is, after all, reflective of paper notebooks and diaries. The 3 by 2 ratio is far better for taking notes than a 16 by 9 device, which is simply too narrow when it's in portrait mode. So why do I still use OneNote for note taking after all these years? Well, firstly, it's been around nearly 20 years, and it's really only just getting popular, so I know I can trust it to be around for another 20. Most Microsoft people that I deal with are big fans of OneNote. That wasn't the case when I started working with Microsoft in around 2013, when most people, even within Microsoft, barely even knew about it. OneNote automatically recognizes text in pictures and makes them searchable. The back camera on the Surface Pro 8 has been upgraded to 10 megapixels, perfect for capturing photos of documents and whiteboards into OneNote. OneNote also recognizes my handwriting automatically and makes it searchable too. You can even convert your notes to text, although I usually don't. Many studies have demonstrated that taking notes by hand is far better than typing them. I know many people that happily do type their notes into OneNote, but taking notes with handwriting is better for your memory, it's better for your understanding and your processing. Now, I'll leave a link to our series that delves into why that is below, but safe to say that the Surface Pro 8 and the new Slim Pen 2 has reinvigorated my passion for digital note taking. Another reason I still use OneNote is that it puts information at the fingertips of even the most disorganized person. It's a tool for gathering and sharing knowledge too. In that way, I see it as far more than just a note taking application. I'd love to see it move to incorporate inking innovations like the ones that we see in Microsoft Journal, but I don't take notes in Microsoft Journal or any other note-taking app because OneNote is far more than just a note-taking application. The new Slim Pen 2, like the Slim Pen 1, has a pointy plastic tip. The new pen has a pointier tip than the first version, which makes it easier to see what you're doing when you write or draw. It feels very accurate and it's more responsive, although the tip is made of hard plastic. And like all digital pens with hard plastic tips, I'm looking at you Apple Pencil, it's noisy on the screen. Fortunately, it's not as noisy as the Apple Pencil. Unfortunately, it's been quite a while since I was in a room taking notes with other people, so I'm yet to see how this noisy pen plays out in a public setting. In combination with the Surface Pro 8, the Slim Pen 2 now incorporates haptic feedback. A small motor in the pen triggers when you're dragging the pen across the screen, mimicking the feel of pen on paper. It's a constant theme with digital note taking. Many people are reluctant to do it because initially it is messier than pen and paper. Ultimately, you need to retrain your brain to deal with a very different medium. So adding features like subtle haptic feedback, well, that makes digital note taking more accessible for a lot of people. The shape of the Slim Pen 2 might take a little bit of getting used to if you're using the older Surface pens. Personally, I quite like the carpenter's pencil shape of the Slim Pen 2, and I don't mind using it for long periods of time. That said, if you still prefer the older model of Surface Pen, well, it still works, albeit without the haptic feedback and the faster response times. I've spent a lot of time over our summer here in Australia working on some 3D designs in Shaper 3D. I absolutely love this application on Windows. It's especially brilliant on the Surface Pro 8. I'll leave a link to our video on Shaper 3D below. It's a great application that was designed for the iPad and Apple Pencil. It's recently been ported to Windows, and now it works brilliantly on the Surface Pro 8 too. And it now works quite well with mouse and keyboard input too but it's an absolute pleasure to use with pen and touch. I'd say that this is the most versatile 3D design application and it's running on the most versatile mobile device. In our summer, I spend a few weeks camping with my family. We like to go off road and off grid, but everybody still needs to charge their mobile devices. So I designed a small satellite battery box that I can use away from our camper to charge our mobile phones and run LED lights. I completed the design in Shaper 3D. I sliced it for 3D printing using Ultimaker Cura and I dispatched it to the 3D printer, all directly from my Surface Pro 8. I put it all together using a 21 amp hour LifePo 4 12 volt battery pack and some typical 12 volt panel mount components. So I now have this solar powered mobile device charging station. And by the way, since I used a PD or power delivery capable USB-C output socket, I can charge my Surface Pro 8 directly from this thing. In fact, this thing will charge my Surface Pro 8 around about five times. It stood up to a couple of camping trips already, not bad for a hobby 3D designer. The other tablet app that I've been spending a lot of time with is Concepts. Concepts have added a lot of features to their Windows app in recent months, and I'm so excited about this app that I'm gonna do another video about it soon. Using the Slim Pen 2 on the Surface Pro 8 in Concepts is mind blowing. Concepts really seems to have optimized for the Slim Pen 2, and drawing with the pen here just feels like pen and paper. As the name suggests, Concepts isn't just for digital artists, it's for everyone. It's for people like you and me who need to be able to visually work things out and see how they fit together. Whether that be an org chart, a 3D design, a presentation, or a sales process. So I've been using Concepts a lot on the Surface Pro 8. Make sure that you check it out if you have a multimodal device like my Surface Pro 8. 
download it from the Microsoft Store. On our summer camp trip, I downloaded a few episodes from my favorite shows to watch at night. This is where that viewing mode of the Surface Pro really shines. Fold the keyboard underneath and open up the kickstand and you're ready to sit back and watch something. Whether it's Netflix, Disney+, Plus, YouTube, or something else, the Surface Pro 8 makes a great watching device. The speakers on the Pro 8 are far louder than they were on the Pro 7 Plus. Pro 7 Plus was a bit of an anomaly in that way. It had really poor speakers. So I was glad to make the move to the Surface Pro 8, which has nice, loud, and clear speakers. Of course, like all Surface Pros, apart from the Pro X, the Pro 8 does have a headphone jack. So I could have plugged in a set of headphones if I needed to. I'm personally more likely to use Bluetooth headphones for watching things. And the Pro 8 does that very well, thanks to some updates in Windows 11 that allow for much better Bluetooth audio handling. At around the same time, I picked up the new Surface Duo 2 phone. By the way, the Slim Pen 2 works on that phone, and it even works on my 55-inch Surface Hub. So with one digital pen, I can move from a 6-inch device all the way up to an 85-inch device and everything in between. I think that's pretty cool. But the reason I mention the phone is that it works brilliantly with the Your Phone app that's built into Windows 11. The Your Phone app also worked brilliantly with my previous phone, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20. This app allows me to send and receive messages, respond to and dismiss notifications, gives me instant access to my camera roll. I can even access the screen of my device without even touching it. In fact, I can now even run individual apps directly from the Surface Duo 2 on my Pro 8 using the Your Phone app. So I could run five, even 10 apps simultaneously from my phone on my PC. You can even copy and paste information between the devices. So that's just a few of the things that I'm doing with my Surface Pro 8 in a little over three months. Do you have a Surface Pro 8? Tell us what you love about it in the comments below. And if you've got any questions, we're always here to help. If you haven't already, make sure that you hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get updated about our weekly videos on everything from Surface and multimodal computing through to Microsoft Teams and tackling distraction. One thing that I do hope to add to the Surface Pro 8 in the next couple of months is an external graphics card or GPU. Thanks to the addition of Thunderbolt 4, it's now possible to pair a GPU with the Surface. So I might be able to run games like Microsoft Flight Simulator, power up more external screens, or even do faster 3D rendering. I'll also compare the Pro X to the Pro 8 for you, so stay tuned and make sure that you're subscribed.